Generalized oral mouth pain, difficult to diagnose and difficult to treat. The workup and how I go about managing it today on The Open Reduction. Welcome to The Open Reduction, the show everything oral and maxillofacial surgery. I'm Dr. Tom Bolton and today we're talking about oral mouth pain. I recently had a patient come to the office with concern of generalized pain throughout her mouth. It was worse on the tip of the tongue, but it was present everywhere. It was affecting her taste and her quality of life significantly. I'm not the first provider she's seen for this. In fact, I'm the fifth. At this point, her pain is about equal to her frustration. She's a 95 year old female who's very independent and very nice person. She's had this pain for about four months and nothing she's done so far has helped. Her internist gave her biotin, uh, ENT gave her chlorhexidine, and her dentist gave her Oragel. So far, nothing's touched it. There have been no recent changes in her health, her diet, or her oral hygiene. Her clinical exam is relatively unremarkable. Her oral mucosa is pink with no signs of mucositis. Her glands are producing appropriate amounts of saliva, and she has a full healthy complement of dentition. She points to the tip of her tongue as to where her pain is the worst, but it's generalized everywhere. It typically gets worse as the day goes on. Everything about this patient points to burning mouth syndrome. Burning mouth syndrome is defined as an intraoral burning sensation for which no other cause can be found. The pain has a burning quality and is felt superficially in the oral mucosa. Additional diagnostic criteria includes pain that is present at least two hours daily for at least three months. The oral mucosa appears healthy and sensory testing is normal. Burning mouth syndrome is most common in postmenopausal females. The typical presentation is generalized burning, which is sometimes worse on the tip of the tongue. The discomfort is debilitating and can severely affect quality of life, and it can alter taste sensation as well. There's a long list of potential causes of burning mouth syndrome, and we need to rule all of them out before a diagnosis of idiopathic burning mouth syndrome can be established. The diagnosis can be confused with herpes stomatitis or aptus ulcers. Nutritional deficiencies such as vitamin B12, B6, zinc, folate, and iron can all present with burning oral pain. We need to rule out diabetes, thyroid disease, candida infection, GERD, and menopause as potential causes of the burning pain. Once we've done this, we can establish a diagnosis of idiopathic burning mouth syndrome. Studies do suggest that anxiety and depression can have a role in burning mouth syndrome. Okay, our workup is complete and we've reached a diagnosis of idiopathic burning mouth syndrome. So now what? First, some good news. Up to 50% of patients with burning mouth syndrome have resolution over time. But this can take a couple years and 50% of patients don't get relief from their symptoms. So this is something we have to know how to treat. This disease process is treated with medication and I've had the most luck with oral clonazepam. I start with 0.25 milligrams per day and the dose can be tapered up gradually to two milligrams per day. Once the pain symptoms have resolved, we need to taper the medication gradually. Remember, this is a benzodiazepine. Other medication alternatives include gabapentin, pregabalin, and capsaicin. I place this patient on a low dose oral clonazepam starting with 0.25 milligrams per day and her symptoms resolved very quickly. She's doing great and has now tapered off the benzodiazepines. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. Subscribe to the channel. All kinds of great content, oral and maxillofacial surgery. I'm your host, Dr. Tom Bolton. Catch you next time on The Open Reduction.